Welcome back. This is the Scaling Secrets Podcast. We're here to scale your business to seven or eight figures, and we're here with Casey Gray, the Conscious Builder. He is at theconsciousbuilder.com. It's the Conscious Builder on YouTube and on Instagram. And Casey is all about the construction industry. Building. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me, Robert. Glad to have you. And so, you know, maybe, I don't know, 15 years or so, I was in college and I took some kind of environmental type class, and they went into all the ways that your home can kill you. And it was like just really scary with like radon and paint and just like all the stuff that happens in the vents and it was pretty scary. And then, uh, so it's great to uh, just geek out a little bit, but only to a certain extent, just to find out about all the futuristic ways that homes can be and also how they can be like eco-friendly and good for the environment and good for the electricity bill. So it's always kind of fun to kind of get the scratch, the, the guy itch to use the man card. So tell me about what you have uh, going on. What's your current focus and passion? Yeah, so our main business is we, we call it high performance homes. So we do retrofits and custom homes. Really what we focus on is the health of the home. So this can, it really depends because what we do is custom. Somebody might come to us and, and be concerned about their carbon footprint, whereas others are more just concerned about the indoor air quality of the home or others are, are more focused on reducing their energy bills and building a home that, you know, in the middle of the winter can, can lose heat and still maintain its heat for a few days, even without power. So everybody has different goals, but ultimately what we're focused on is building healthy, comfortable, and efficient homes. When you build a healthy and comfortable home, ultimately you're going to have an efficient home. And, th and that can cover a wide range of topics, but ultimately, in, in my opinion, it comes down to what are you doing to make sure that that indoor air quality is good? And what are you doing to kind of future-proof your home? right to a certain extent which means uh, make sure as utility bills continue to rise what are you doing to protect yourself from that happening protecting yourself from inflation to some extent really wonderful so there are many angles and what i'm hearing from you is that your home is sort of an expression of yourself right that you have this living space and it's sometimes fun to think about well what can i do to make my home cleaner or kind of make it the space that i want or to play that game of how low can i make the energy bill and when I was a kid, me and my dad used to have fun with our security system. We would say, oh, let's have like the home automation. And this was like in like 80s and 90s. We'd have like the home automation and say, let's have these lights come on at 5 p.m. And we'd say, well, there's an alarm, but let's make it add this kind of sensor to this window. So if someone tries to break this window, it'll set off the alarm. And it was kind of fun to do those sorts of things. And so when you get a client that comes to you, is it similar things like this, like kind of just this expressiveness and this just kind of like uh, just having a, a, a fun plan to make their home unique absolutely anybody who's doing any sort of custom work is doing it for their own reasons right so it's going to be like you said a representation of how they feel what do they want to show the world to some extent or what are they thinking most of the people who come to us are thinking long term as well we're not going to be building a short-term investment property because that type of thinking is different. Uh, the types of stuff that we're doing is for a longer, someone who is thinking longer term, planning on staying in the home or passing the home down to the next generation and so forth. Now, when we get into like technology and stuff that does come up, but it can easily be implemented after. Usually people who are coming to us are really focused on envelope. How do we build the house better? Because the technology, although it's fun, to some extent, there's a lot of conversations about out there about whether or not it's good to have all this wireless stuff in our house, <laughs> right? Is that actually helping our health or, well, it's definitely not helping, but is it harming our health becomes becomes the question. Uh, so we don't get into a lot of the smart home stuff. A lot of the stuff that we do is, is I, I like to keep it simple it, personally, because although I love geeking out on all that technology and trying things out, we want to build things that are resilient and technology will break at some point, will stop working. So if we're just building a solid home with the least amount of moving parts as possible, <laughs> then you're going to have less problems than there are. There's no such thing as a maintenance free home, but we can build a home that does have what is built with products that are not going to lose their R value over time if they get wet or grow mold if they get wet or uh, a wall assembly that can dry if water gets into it, right? We just have to assume certain things like that happen. There are products out there that can help with all of these goals. 
is there anything just cool or remarkable that people have wanted to do to their house? Like you think kind of the default that you think of is like finishing the basement, right? And they have this basement that's unused space and you do all these things to make it like livable. But is there anything just like super cool that comes to your mind as far as someone saying, well, I want to change this in my house or add this to my house? Uh, you know, there, we've done some hidden doors for people, right? Like we did one house where the door into their master bedroom was like a bookcase where you actually pulled the door and the door slid open. Or, sorry, pulled the book and the and the door would push open. Uh, so we've done stuff like that. But beyond that, it's it's fairly, it's not easy, but it's simple. We're really focused on you know, what we know from building science. And we've learned a lot over the previous years. So a lot of times people, we're not finishing homes either, right? We're building the stuff that people know need to be done well. The stuff that you don't see, ultimately, the stuff that's hidden in the walls is the stuff that we're doing. So, you know, you, you hear the saying, you know, what's, what's on the inside that's important? We kind of bring that into houses because uh, it, it really is true. Um, the stuff that you see is great, but that's all, that's all makeup for the most part, right? And can be changed at any point. The stuff that's in the wall is a lot harder to change later and a lot more expensive to change later. So to me, that's all really cool, right? When you build something uh, that you actually want to show off. Uh, and I remember when we used to do tours of our passive home, I'd spend most of the time just standing in the mechanical room talking to people, <laughs> right? That's where we spent most of the time because that's where you could see a lot of how the house was built. And so you're mentioning this term passive home. What is that? So passive, uh, there's... So not, not to be confused with a solar passive home. So you might've heard of solar passive homes where they try to take advantage of the sun to heat their home. Uh, passive house is actually a certification. There's Passive House International and there's Passive House US. Uh, they're a little bit different and they're ones designed really for uh, more obviously the US as you can, it's FIAS for short. And then the international is a, is a different standard which, which is from Europe and uh, Really, it's one of the most rigorous building standards in the world when it comes to energy. So it focuses on how much energy does the house use to, for the hot water, for heating and cooling and so forth. And what can you do to reduce those numbers? And there's numbers that you'll have to hit. And the, what you have to do in order to hit those numbers is going to vary. For example, a certified passive house in California, you might only have walls that are R30. R30 is the way you typically measure insulation in walls. So you might be able to hit that certification with R30 walls, but where we're building in Ottawa, you might have to go, we've gone, had to go all the way up to R90 before, right? So it really, it's really dependent on where you're building the home, but then it focuses just on that energy consumption as opposed to how you're doing that. So it's not gonna focus on materials. There's other building standards for that, which are even more rigorous, but it's not gonna focus on any of the carbon footprint. It's not gonna focus on any chemicals or the health of the products or how they're made or anything like that. It's just strictly, what are you doing or how is your home going to keep its heat or keep its cool in the summer? And so it seems like a lot of our emphasis so far, like you said, there's a lot of it's about what you don't see. And we mentioned a few times about fixing up the, the walls and the insulation. Is that a starting point for you or is that like a primary focus or is there more to it in uh, what you do? So a lot of people reach out to us because of the envelope work. So they might just hire us to build the envelope of their home and then they're going to take care of all the finishing, but we can do everything. You know, we have a team of carpenters. Uh, I'm, I don't swing the hammer anymore, but I'm a carpenter by, by trade. So we have 18 or so carpenters that can do the work. And a lot of the work we do in house because it's often, well, it is better quality. It's not necessarily always the most cost effective, but it's that triangle, you know, you want it fast. Do you want it? Uh, done well, <laughs> or do you want it cheap, right? Choose two out of the three. So we're usually, <laughs> we're focusing really on doing it well as would be the primary one. So we can really do anything when it comes to residential construction. And our specialty is really in the envelope and making sure it's done, but we have some amazing finished carpenters that can do some fantastic work as well. Very nice. And you mentioned in there that you said that you used to act as the carpenter, but then now you've gone beyond that. And since this is the Scaling Secrets podcast, that seems like a, a fun path to just talk about how you, when you've outgrown yourself doing the work in your business and kind of the pain that comes with letting go and some of the, the stress and the decisions there. So can you explain that? Can you say what's happened? Like, uh, how has your business grown to the point where now you begin to delegate to others? It's been tough. You know, I've been doing this for 13 years. I got off the tools fairly quickly just because we got busy, but and we've kind of grown slowly since then. 
But I've, I've never had a problem letting go of responsibility, like delegating, letting somebody else take care of something. I think that's the number one thing is a lot of people, a lot of people who start businesses are artists, right? So they like to be in control. They like to be able to do the work. Uh, and, you know, they started their business because they thought they can do it better a lot of the time. And then they don't want, they're not necessarily entrepreneurial at their core. They're more artists at their core. So I think the the sooner you can realize what your strengths are and the sooner you can find people to fill your weaknesses uh, is going to be the time when your business starts to grow. So one of the greatest things that I've done is I brought in a partner who is different than myself. So I know I'm not the operations guy. I think Elon Musk said, you know, it's easy to build a car, but it's hard to build the systems that build that car. <laughs> and that's what it comes down to in any business, right? How, how can your business operate without you? And what are you going to do to build those systems? And I knew I wasn't the person to build those systems. So my partner has really been spearheading that because I'm definitely a visionary. If you, I don't know if you've talked about EOS on your show, the entrepreneurial operating system, but that's uh, something we're diving more into uh, as part of that, you realize who the visionary is and, and who the implementer is. My partner is definitely the implementer and I'm definitely the visionary. So the idea is to keep us in our core strengths so that we can grow those. And then you find the right people and put them in the right seat. Sometimes you might have the right people in the wrong seats. You got to figure that out as quickly as possible. Um, and you definitely need to work together. So there's been a lot of ups and downs. We're still deal. I think that just comes with business. You're going to deal with stuff, especially when the when the craziness of the world <laughs> happens, right? You're just going to have to deal with that. You need to be ready to deal with that. Um, but I think finding somebody to fill those gaps, those weaknesses that you have, uh, for me has been the biggest thing. And, you know, my faith has been a, has a big, been a big one as well. You can only, uh, that would probably be the biggest, actually. I would have to say that's number one, because you can only do so much. You only have so many hours in a day. You only so much you can control. Uh, at the end of the day, you just need to focus on what you know uh, needs to be done that day and uh, to your best to, to not get stressed out about everything else. And I think the, the, the only thing that can really help that is having uh, faith that it is going to work out and that you've done what you need to do. Nice. I can tell that you're really passionate about this and you're mentioning so many things that we might have like heard some of these fundamentals, but it's always good to get these reminders of how important it is to have the self introspection and to know what your strengths and weaknesses are. And that way, you know what to hand off and, and where your boxes are. And if you're the visionary to then get the implementer so that way your business is not just chaos that way you're not stepping on each other's toes that way you can figure out what the systems are that way things are reliable and repeatable and then you're mentioning your faith that way you can just have this absolute focus and say well i i don't know how it all will figure out but here's my destiny and here's my goal and here's what i'm going to do and that way you don't give up at the the slightest bit of resistance you have that sort of resolve and you know you mentioned faith there's i mean there's like cathedrals in the world where they've been building them for like 140 years right where like the grand kids don't even see it being finished and completed and that's pretty cool to think about just that the whole idea of you're, you're set on a course you have this plan and there are obstacles along the way but those are things that you will then uh, figure out and so do you think, is there some, and you mentioned a little bit there about when the unexpected happens. So, uh, and you know, there's been, I mean, it seems like every few years there's some kind of like building related problem, right? If it's like recession in real estate or COVID in real estate, there's always some huge catastrophe. So do you think, is there something that you and your business do better to allow you to weather the storm? Are you really good at like the marketing and the inbound or the, the ads or the social media or like, what do you think? you are really good at as far as making the business grow that just makes you different than the rest? Well, I think what you need to be good at is adapting when ultimately your plans don't work out because they rarely do. I always remember a joke and uh, I don't know if you've heard this before, but do you know how to make God laugh? Huh. You tell them your plans. So <laughs> uh, we all think that we can plan it all out and you know it's just gonna be a straight line, but ultimately it's never like that. It's more like a map, right? You know where you are and you know where you're trying to get. And even once you get there, it's not the final destination. But what you can't see on that map is all the hurdles, you know, the, the traffic jams, the, the accidents, the bridges that are out, uh, the mountain that you have to go over top and what you have to go through. Uh, so that's more like what it is. And I think having, 
uh, first, a strong vision for what you're trying to accomplish and having that faith that you will get there on God's time, <laughs> not on your time, uh, that uh, that's ultimately what's going to what's going to get you there at the end of the day. So what we do, you know, that, that for me as the, you know, business leader, so to speak, has been the biggest thing. I'm, I'm not losing sleep over the, the little things anymore. I'm doing what I can in my power and, and uh, letting go. It's not to say that I'm not, I'm just sitting on the couch and not doing anything, right? We have to take action. We have to do something, but it's not getting stressed out about the stuff that I can't control. So that that's one thing that I'm doing now as a as a company, our YouTube channel has been a big part of what we're trying to do. So I think as a business owner, having more than one stream of income is is extremely beneficial, right? If you only build houses, and the market goes down, well, then that's going to hurt more. If you only do renovations, and that market goes down, that's gonna, that's gonna hurt, right? So luckily, we do that those two things, plus, we're starting to build a new revenue stream with what we're doing online. Uh, so that hasn't quite taken off the way we had hoped yet, right? Not on our timeline. So we're continuing. We feel like we're on the right path. We have some good partnerships that we're working on and things are, are going really well. Uh, but that's been a big part. So that also helps bring us work. But at the same time, uh, we're a little bit, bit, we're bigger than what we were two years ago. We're twice the size. So we need more work as well. And it's easier if you're like a one man show or you got a few guys to just you know, get the jobs and keep going and keep everybody busy. When you got 18 guys, you got to keep busy. It's a different story, right? Or if you're building thousand homes a year, it's a different story, which is beyond where we're at. I think at each level of business, you're going to have, you're going to have different problems and being able to adapt and to some extent predict what could be coming, uh, is that you want to do, um, We've to some extent knew uh, in my mind, I'm like, I was, don't know. I still think things are going to get worse. <laughs> so we're kind of planning for that. You know what happens? Luckily, we, we're still a bigger company compared to other renovation or custom home companies. No, we're a mid-sized company. Uh, we still don't need like a hundred projects a year, right? If we get a handful of good sized projects, we're doing well. Uh, you can attract those people, then that's great. And what's actually working out well is the clients that we were getting during COVID when all the money was just being printed and handed out Halloween candy, ultimately those projects, some of them got canceled because people didn't have as much money as they thought they had. The clients that we're getting now aren't reliant on the economy. So we're actually getting better clients now to work with because they have their money or they have the equity sitting somewhere that they're sure what it's going to cost. The market's not going to affect them. So we're actually getting better clients now when times are worse than they were when times are good. <laughs> right? So we had a bunch of projects get canceled, which we never had before. Um, but now we're still locking projects in, which are working out, which is working out. So Casey, you've been through all of these adventures with COVID and before all these ups and downs. And since this is a podcast, it's always a lot of fun to hear stories, right? Stories about like catastrophic failure or huge success, or maybe a little bit of both. So what comes to mind as far as a fun story about your business adventures? A fun story or a catastrophic story? Or maybe <laughs> both. So, well, I can share just what you know build on what i was saying before about things that we were dealing with or we still are uh, as a business right because it's never perfectly smooth sailing so during covid like people had tons of money about property values were going up money was being printed they're getting all sorts of stuff so we locked in a bunch of projects with people that thought they had more money than what they did well they had access to more money than what they ended up having when we were ready to start building. So we ended up having about $5 million worth of work get canceled. I should say, sorry, about three and a half million get canceled and a million and a half that we walked away from because we weren't, it wasn't going well with the home. We just knew we weren't the right contractor. So we just said, you know, we're, we're part ways because we know that this we've been down this road before. <laughs> we're not going to go down this road, right? I think one of the best things you can do in business is learn when to say no and walk away. Even though the money might look right, uh, it could bring a lot more headaches than you want. And we've done enough of that to learn <laughs> to learn that it's not worth the money. Uh, it's not worth putting your team through a difficult client or even, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, people are necessarily bad, but we just, we're not the contractor for everybody, right? Not every business is designed to work with every type of client, right? So, um, 
Uh, anyways, after going through, you know, expecting to be doing about five million dollars worth of work, and then all of a sudden that being gone uh, and having to fill that gap as quickly as possible is where we're at at this point. And it doesn't mean that we necessarily need $5 million worth of work, but we need to make sure we have a really good team. You know, one thing that we're proud of is a team that we built and uh, the processes and the systems that we've been working on together. And we want to maintain that. Uh, but in order to maintain that, we need to make sure that the work keeps coming in and going into the winter uh, where, where we are, it's not necessarily always guaranteed work. It's easy to get work locked in for the spring, uh, but you need to kind of set yourself up for the winter. So all of this happening over the summer has kind of been us to some extent scrambling to try and fill those gaps, but uh, ultimately it comes down to us doing what we can within our power, you know, doing what we can on the marketing front, get the phone to ring and seeing what opportunities come our way. But I, I am a believer in, you know, everything happens for us. It's not happening to us. So the question becomes, all right, what, what is, what, what can we learn from this? How can we get better from this? And, and what opera are ultimately going to come from this? Because there's always an opportunity. It's kind of like being a treasure hunter. I think entrepreneurial entrepreneurship is being a treasure hum, hunter. A lot of the time is, is trying to find the, the silver light, trying to find the gold. I agree completely. And it took me a long time to realize that positivity does not mean denial, that you can be kind of like positive and negative, right? You can say, well, here is the amount of work I need to give to my team, or here's the amount of jobs we need to get, here's the income we need. But no, having that that problem in front of you does not mean that you are giving up or does not mean that you're just being so negative. It just means like, okay, here's the problem to be solved. And then what are we going to do in order to solve that problem? And it's so easy to just give up. And it's it's so easy to find some other way when sometimes you should just stick to what you were doing. And so it's great to get a, a glimpse into your analytical mind here where you've, you mentioned some of these numbers and even just some of your thinking involves like, okay, what do I have time for or what is possible? And, uh, and it's all wonderful that you, as you said, you have all of these kind of extra pieces of the business that are going, such as the YouTube channel. And so speaking of that YouTube channel, can you tell us like what we'll find there? Like what kind of fun stuff uh, have you already posted and what do you have planned? Yeah, we have I'm pretty sure like well over 400 videos now. <laughs> I haven't checked recently, but ultimately we're, we're going through a little bit of a revamp just to clean up the channel a little bit, but we're still continuously putting out videos one or two a week at this point. And it's, it's designed for the homeowner, any home wants to build healthy, comfortable, and efficient homes. So I think a lot of people spend, well, their home is their biggest investment and they know typically very little about it and how it operates. So this, our channel educate people on that so that they can make better decisions. And I, and I think a lot of us make certain decisions just because we don't know, or we choose not to know. We, maybe we don't go out of our way to try and educate ourselves. Um, but by us doing our part and educating people about what's possible and what you can ask for and, and what products are out there, I, I hope that that changes the way some people think and the way they approach their projects, whether it's a renovation or a new home, but to just to think differently about your home and to know that there is a better way to do it than what a lot of people do, right? Just because they've been doing it for 20 years doesn't mean it's done the right way or that there's not a better way. And I think a lot of people get stuck. A lot of contractors get stuck in their ways without really understanding why they do it in the first place. So our channel is to help, you know, a lot of contractors might pick it up as well, but we're really designed it for homeowners. Uh, so anything to do with understanding uh, like HVAC systems, for example, I won't get into the to the details, but that's a big part of a healthy home is, is how are you heating and cooling your home? And what are you doing to bring fresh air into your home? And do you have a fresh air system? Do you know what that is? Do you know what an HRV or an ERV is? Does your contractor know that? Do they even understand how it works? Right? So, uh, understanding that you need to make your home airtight. Uh, and a lot of people say, well, what if doesn't my home need to breathe? And my response, I've done lots of videos on this is yes, it does, but we want it to breathe like we breathe through our lungs, not through our skin, right? So we don't want the walls to breathe necessarily. We want them to be able to sweat, right? Like we sweat through our skin, perspire, but we don't want to be, you know, breathing in and out through, through our skin. We want to control that breath. And it's the same way. We have to look at our house the same way. And we have to understand that everything works as a system. If you look at each individual part of your home as separate, uh, that's when you're going to run into some problems.
And I, I love that analogy, and it gives us a good idea of what kind of just fun that it awaits us on your YouTube channel because some of these are nuanced conversations, right? It's not necessarily like one or the other, like that whole analogy of, of breathing. And it also seems like just when the most of us who are living in homes, there's like the, a long list of all kinds of just weird quirks about it. And it also seems like the problem is either our homes are too old or too new, right? Either it's like from the 80s or earlier and things are old and falling apart. And then also a lot of the, these new homes, not yours, of course, but a lot of these new homes, they're just, they cut sneak corners, right? Like my my AC is just barely too small and my garbage disposal is just barely too small. And I think the garage door opener that we replaced a few years ago, it was just it's barely too weak. It's like all these little co corners that these modern builders can cut. And then so it's definitely worthwhile for someone to, you like you say, and turn a bad into a good, to use this as an educational experience and then maybe fix up our home or when it comes time to make our home our own and have that custom home made, we can learn from all those stupid corners that they, they, some of the builders made because they're just cranking out the homes. And so is there anything that is a good starting point as far as thinking about this? Like I know there's so many, so many start, but if someone wanted to kind of begin to get the gears turning about, like you said, about what is possible or what to think about in changing their home or looking in a new home, is there just a real quick, just low hanging fruit number one idea someone should have? <laughs> kind of a loaded question. So I guess where, where to start? So so I think number one place you want to start is to, is to kind of, I don't want to say temper expectations, but be, get more clear on what those expectations are. So I think a lot of people just don't understand what's required to do, to renovate a home properly or to build a good home. Like building a custom home, for example, is expensive no matter what. If it was cheaper than buying your you know, builder grade home or, or an existing home, then more people would do it. But the reality is it's, it's expensive to begin with, right? So if you're gonna build a better home, the minimum code, and minimum code, by the way, is the worst house you're allowed to build by law. So uh, if you're gonna go down that path, you just need to understand that it's going to be more expensive and that's why it's a longer term investment. You're doing it for yourself. It's not necessarily a financial, gain. It's going to be a gain in other aspects of your life, right? You're going to have a better life because you built your dream home on a, on a property, your dream, and you, and it's going over the long term. it's going to have some returns for you, but it's not necessarily going to be in a financial investment. If you're planning on just buying something and selling it and trying to make some quick money, that's a whole different story. So I think just understanding those expectations. The other thing I would say is to get very clear on what your priorities are. If you just want your kitchen to look really good, there's a lot of companies that can do that, right? And do a kitchen renovation. But if you actually want to make your home healthier, understand that there's going to have, there's going to be a cost to that. And you might have to sacrifice some of those prettier items, depending on what your budget is at the beginning. Like I said, all the stuff that you see is makeup, so it can be changed later. But if you get a good contractor who understands that and you plan the entire vision and maybe phase, do a phased approach, then you can really you do it in the right order, right? So you mentioned like your AC was, you know, just a little too small. Um, putting in like, for example, changing, if you need a new AC and a new furnace, that's a different story. But if you plan on doing upgrades to your windows and to the envelope and ultimately making your home itself a lot more energy efficient, then you don't want to start with your HVAC system. You want to start with the envelope because ultimately, if not, you're going to have a system that ends up being oversized and oversized systems aren't good things either. So uh, if you can find somebody when it comes to contracting who really understands that and can work with you and you can get very clear on your priorities, that's going to be the best way to approach it. It's what we call an integrated design approach, right? You bring in your contractor, you bring in your designer, you bring in your energy advisor, and they all work closely together with the homeowner. Wonderful. Well, this is a, an excellent education that you're giving me and our audience. And this is definitely something to think about and think about long term. And I love your how you mentioned how the mindset, like there's basically two mindsets, right? There's like, are you a short term and are you a fixer and flipper? But what this is, is more of like a forever home, long haul, make it our own, where 
maybe maybe money is no object is the wrong phrase, but money is less important as far as what, what you want and what you want to build. And that's just, that's very interesting to think about. And so if someone is, is out there in podcast land and they're taking this all and taking in all of your advice and ideas and suggestions, and they're saying, man, this Casey guy, where has he been my whole life? Then how do they know if they're a good fit to contact you? And how do they take the next step with you? Ultimately, if you just want to learn, if you're not, you know, we're, we're building in Ottawa and the surrounding areas in Ontario, Canada. So uh, if you're not in that area, unfortunately, we can't build or renovate for you, but we can help guide you. And that's what our YouTube channel, we do have a podcast as well. We've just put that on pause, but you can still find it if you want to get into some conversations with other professionals. But if you're looking to, uh, for specific things with regards to your home, renovating your home, building a home, just go to YouTube and search the conscious builder will pop up consciousbuilder.com is our website. You can find all of our stuff there as well. But ultimately, if you have questions posted, the uh, best place would be like our Instagram or our YouTube channel. And we try to get back to all the questions as long as they're, <laughs> they're ad questions. You know, you, you know what happens. You know, you do, we do get some trolls on, <laughs> on YouTube. And sometimes we just choose not to engage because we know where that's going to go. Uh, but it is fun. Uh, but yeah, so I think start there is, is ultimately where it is. Wonderful. You get those trolls, you know, you're doing something right because you have a large enough audience to attract those. And so you're saying we should go to YouTube and go to the conscious builder. So that way we can just get some of your infectious energy and to just begin learning all, all of these different things, because it's so easy to uh, just get overloaded with all the information, but you watch a YouTube channel. It's kind of more fun. You subscribe to it. You get these bite-sized pieces. And then over time you figure out what you need to know. So that way you can be educated enough to take some of these steps. And so as we're winding down our conversation here, Casey, I think it's always fun to end with a quote, moral, or lesson. And it doesn't necessarily have to be like the best quote you've ever heard, but sometimes things just jump out of our brains when we're asked. So if I just ask you in this very moment, is there a quote, moral, or lesson that just for whatever reason is what you're thinking about, what do you have to say? I would say don't believe everything that you think. There's a lot uh, that goes on. There's, I don't. This is a little off off from what we've been talking about. If we're thinking like entrepreneurial, though, if we're not necessarily talking about construction, um, but just in the world in general, I think there's we're not uh, to take on all the information that ultimately is out there, right? To to know about every disaster that's happened in uh, every world and and to be expected to have an opinion on it and so forth. Uh, and for the most part, we don't even know what's true and what's not true because we don't know where the information is unless we're actually there dealing with it. Right. That's a whole different, it's a whole different story. And I think what sometimes we get stuck in, in these patterns that ultimately don't serve us or our families or our loved ones. And it's just because we're believing these thoughts that come into our mind and we get attached to these thoughts that don't serve us. And that, that can be, you know, and, and based on my belief, you know, those, any thoughts that's not serving you, that's, you know, the devil working his way into your life sort of thing. Right. And, um, as an entrepreneur, especially if you're, you know, if you're dealing with a business and you have a family and you're trying to you know be a good father or mother and run your business and trying to be a part of your community, there's a, there's, as you expand and grow and evolve, you're going to get attacked more and more. And we need to really stand at the gate of our mind and be careful about what we let in. Um, so that would be my, my words of advice and something that I've been taking uh, very seriously. And there's, there's even these days I can't watch anymore just because I know that it affects the way that I think. <laughs> so it's hard for me to find a good movie with my family to watch because I, it's hard to connect <laughs> once you start to realize everything that's out there and what can be coming to your mind and how it affects your thinking. Uh, you, you, you start to think twice before you pay attention to something. I agree with you completely. That's deep and powerful. It's like how being you're careful of what you let into your home, you're careful about the food you let into your body and the, those thoughts of that information you let into your mind. It's the same uh, idea, right? Just garbage in, garbage out. It's, it's important to guard that gate. And if those thoughts are not serving you, then, then don't let them be a part of what you have. So that's very helpful. And I think that can take us a long way. And in the meantime, it is time to go to The Conscious Builder on YouTube and just subscribe and like all the videos. And if you see those comments from trolls, then downvote the comments. Uh, 
in general. Just get yourself educated and learn some stuff and have some fun. And we'll see you on YouTube at the Conscious Builder channel. And thank you very much, Casey, for stopping by and sharing some really cool ideas with us. Yeah, thanks, Robert, for taking the time to chat with me. Really appreciate it.